We begin by thanking Allah Jalla wa Ala, the most merciful, the most kind, who has enabled each one of us to be here in the house of Allah Jalla wa Ala. And I want to begin by giving some good news. And that news is from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. He says, Man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fid deen. For the one whom Allah wants any goodness, Allah Jalla wa Ala gives his servant, man or woman, the opportunity to learn al Islam. Allah Jalla wa Ala gives that opportunity to those that He wants, those that He loves, and He gives them that facility to come and learn their religion. So, after acknowledging that, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with devotion, with humility, with sincerity, and most importantly, with the words of appreciation. Alhamdulillah. The topic that has been chosen, brothers and sisters, a very important, timely, and much needed topic. Uh, relevant to each one of us, those of us who are married, those of us who are thinking of getting married, those of uh, us who've been married for a very long time, the concept of family is an imperative part of Islam, an essential, in integral part of uh, our very existence. And for that very reason, it's very important that we take some guidance, some guidelines, how we can uh, establish a prosperous, stable, secure family but before we get to that, I want us to really think about this very point that I'm going to mention. If Allah Jalla wa Ala, our maker, he wanted to create us without a family, would that have been impossible for him? When we look at the life of Adam alayhi salam, he was born without a mother and father. And during this very season, we are speaking about one of the greatest of Prophet Isa alayhi salam, who came to this earth without a father. If Allah Jalla wa Ala wanted us to be born without a family, surely that was possible for him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his immense mercy upon his creation, he gave us our family, our mother, father, our children, our partner. All of this is an imperative and essential part of our very existence in the life of this world. But today the question that we ask ourselves is what are the key components that are needed for each one of us to establish a secure, prosperous, stable, happy family. This is what we want to discover in the next 30 minutes or so, bi ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, the moment I use the term family, what sort of imagery do you get in your mind? If you was to close your eyes, and the moment I use the term family, what sort of picture, image do you get in your mind? You see a home especially during this cold period, you can feel the heat. There's a mother and a father. There's a husband and a wife. There's children. There's love. There's compassion. There's mercy. There's forgiveness. There's loyalty. There is honesty. There's transparency. All of those ingredients are available under this roof that is bound by four walls. But the moment I add the term Muslim family, it's more than that. It is two people that are bound by one objective, one goal, and that is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of those things that I mentioned, such as forgiveness, kindness, compassion, love, and all of those things that are needed under one roof, they are essential in building and establishing a, a prosperous family. But more importantly, a stable, secure, prosperous family is much in need of one vision, one mission, one objective, and one goal, and that is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The objective should be in every single household, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. When the husband can understand this very important concept, when the wife can understand this very important concept that is documented in the Quran, and when the children, and if there are other siblings, if there are relatives, and other people living under this roof, if they are all living by this very concept, then surely they are on a path that will lead them towards prosperity, stability, and security. And all of those things, dearest friends, that each one of us are in dire need of. Our motto, our objective, our mission, our vision should be my prayer, my sacrifice, my very existence, and my death is only for my maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a family is not just all of those ingredients that we mentioned, kindness, compassion, they are essential, they are imperative in establishing a prosperous family. 
But when one family is bound by this goal and they are holding hands towards Jannah, then surely this house in this temporary place of abode will be given prosperity. Is it not the case that we make this powerful dua? وَكَانَ أَكْثَرُ دُعَاءِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ This dua that we find, this powerful invocation that we find in the Qur'an, which is also an invocation, not just a verse from the Qur'an, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, they say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً Oh Allah, grant us, Barakah in the life of this world, ease in the life of this world, stability in the life of this world, prosperity in the life of this world, and also in the hereafter, our everlasting abode. This is our temporary place of res residence. The moment we close our eyes, the real journey begins. This is just a place of testing, a place to test us whether we are hungry, eager to attain success in the hereafter. So establishing a prosperous family, brothers and sisters, it's an actual journey. Let me repeat that again. It doesn't happen overnight. You want to have a stable, prosperous, secure, happy family, uh, a family that uh, you, you see and you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I'm so honored to have such siblings. I'm so honored to have such a wife. As a wife, I'm so honored to have such a uh, husband. It doesn't happen overnight. It requires a lot of effort. It requires a lot of dedication, commitment, diligence, time and effort. It doesn't happen just overnight that you think, oh, I'm going to have a happy family. It doesn't work like that. You've got to put a lot of effort in it. And inshallah, then you see the fruits. Just the way, brothers and sisters, you would put a seed in the ground and you give attention to that very place you place the seed in. You water it, you look after it. From that very seed, what happens? Over a course of time, there is a flower tree that grows. Very attractive in, in terms of its image. By looking at it, you see the attraction and the fragrance that it delivers. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So just the way we see that flower tree gradually develop, our family would gradually develop, provided that we adhere and conform to our responsibility, role and responsibility that Allah Jalla wa Ala has given each one of us. We want our family to be the very reason Allah grants us Jannah. We don't want our family to be the very reason we go to Jahannam because that is the gravest of loss. A man will be given Jannah, but when he enters, he will be given a lofty status in Jannah and he would say, Anna hadha ya Allah, what did I do to deserve this? I prayed, I fasted, I gave zakah, and I did a lot of good things. Alhamdulillah, I'm in Jannah, but you've given me a greater degree. Well, what did I do to deserve this? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna rajula la turfa'u darajatuhu fil jannati. A man will be given a lofty status in Jannah. He's already entered Jannah, but then he's given a higher place, and he feels he, he's not deserving of it. And then the man will say, Ya Allah, what did I do to deserve this? And it will be said to him, Bi wala dikalaka. Today your children are making dua for you. Allahu Akbar. How many of us can put our hands up here if I was to ask you, and confidently say that if I was to depart from this temporary place of abode, my son can confidently stand and lead my janazah prayer. My son can confidently stand and make a beautiful prayer for me. My daughter can do the same. How many of us can put our hands on our heart and confidently say that? Because if we're not able to say that, then it's failure. Then it's loss. Because we haven't really understood the purpose of having children. What are they doing under the roof that I live in? Is it just food, drink, sleeping, and just enjoying the, the, the pleasures of the life of this world? Or do we have a mission, objective, a purpose? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says in another narration, وَلَا يَتْرُكُهُ خَلْفَ ظَهْرِهِ إِلَّا كَانَ زَادَهُ إِلَى النَّارِ You see the wealth that you're leaving behind? And wealth is not just hard currency and money that we have. Now we don't have hard currency, it's bank transfer. But it's all those digits, those numbers, that many of us, we're, we're exhausting all of our effort for. Wealth is not just hard currency, it's, it's, it's your house, it's, having, it's, it's your family, it's your children. Rasul Sallallahu says, and the people that you leave behind, the wealth that you leave behind, perhaps they would be the very reason your punishment is increased in the hereafter. Let us all say, Ma'adha Allah. This is not what we want. 
We want our children to be the very reason that we enter Jannah, that Allah Jalla gives us such a lofty status. But this is where the inception of family comes. Inception of family means, where does this journey begin? How do I establish a prosperous family? It begins from the root, the asal, making the right choices when a young man wants to get married, when a young woman wants to get married, and the family are looking for a potential partner for your son or for your daughter, it's important that you follow the guidelines given to us by the Quran and the Sunnah. The code of conduct that has been laid out by the Sharia is absolutely important. We adhere to those. If we don't, then there will be problem. All of those problems that we can see in society today. Alhamdulillah, I'm very fortunate to be working with one of the organizations that deals with uh, marriage, divorce, uh, and all of, all of those uh, aspects of uh, marital life. And subhanallah, it's very unfortunate. The number of cases that we are dealing with on a regular basis. Talaq, talaq, talaq. There are days where from 9 to 5 office hours, every single hour there is a case that we're dealing with. And you, can you imagine, can you really comprehend how difficult that is? This is happening in our society and many of us, we may have relatives, we may, know, we may have Keith and Kin who have those challenges. What is the reason behind all of those problems? It's not making the right choice when we are giving our son or daughter away. When we are getting them married, we're not following the teaching of the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is why we find so much turbulence, so much challenges, so much problems. But when it comes to the inception of marriage, when two people come together, and this is a covenant, this is a bond, this is an agreement. Allah Jalla wa Ala describes this bond covenant between two people in the Quran as mithaqan ghaliza when two people get married it's a covenant it's a bond it's an agreement it's not just a piece of paper that you sign but it is you testifying and declaring to Allah that I'm going to be holding if it's a man then the woman's hand if it's a woman then the man's hand not only in the life of this world dear brothers and sisters but also we're journeying towards our permanent place of residence and through this journey, through thick and thin, times of difficulty, times of prosperity, times of ease, times of happiness, and all of those things that we face in marital life, we're going to stick together no matter what the situation is. This is the very agreement. Allah calls it in the Quran, we call it nikah, but Allah says it's mithaq and ghaliza. It's a strong bond. What's interesting is the word mithaq, it has a relationship with the word wathaq, which means a rope that when you tie it very strong, is it easy to untie? It's not easy to untie. When you have a rope and you give it a good tie, it's not easy to untie. This is how the relationship is when two people come together. It's a relationship where you have to compromise. You have to understand one another. You have to love one another. Look at the good qualities of one another. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that once you're married to someone, there may be times that there are certain qualities, attributes, characteristics you don't like about that person. Those of us who've been married for a while, all of us can relate to that. But Rasul Sallallahu says that if you don't like one quality of that person you're married to, look at the other good qualities that they have. Subhanallah bihamdi. So when it comes to marriage, this covenant that we have, Allah Jalla wa Ala says it's a covenant that is filled with mawaddatan wa rahmah, love and compassion. That when two people come together, and when we say come together, we're speaking about a man choosing a woman because she's pious, she's devout. And a woman choosing a husband. Why? Because he is obedient to Allah and he follows the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then surely this is a, a, a path that you're treading on to, that will lead you to establishing a prosperous family. Rasul sallam, what does he say? From the very initial stage, brothers and sisters, we can't make that fundamental mistake. We have to make the right choices for our children. And if it's you, a young man who's getting married, if it's you as a young woman who is getting married, if you're too focused on how beautiful they are, how handsome they are, how attractive they are, what degree they have, and what if they have a three-bedroom house, and if they have a big bank balance, if you're looking for all of those things, then, my dear friends, that is a recipe for disaster. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, marry a woman for four things. Marry a woman for four things. He went on to say her family lineage, her beauty. But what did he say in the very beginning? 
لدينها marry her for her religious commitment but that is the very thing that we look for at the last that is not our priority when a cv is received what do we look for mashallah tabarakallah what a good job he has i'm giving my daughter away this young man he's earning 50k very good very handsome perfect for my daughter what guarantee is there that your daughter will be happy under this household if this man is not obedient to allah a man who is not obedient to allah will never be obedient to his family is that a difficult formula for us to understand a woman who is not obedient to her sustainer her maker how can this woman be obedient to her husband it's a simple formula a man who is obedient to allah will be obedient to his family who be kind to his family who will be loving towards his family and a woman who understands her purpose of existence and why she is here what's her purpose of living surely she will be a woman who would nurture and care for her family accordingly and appropriately but this is where we make that mistake rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says idha atakum man tardawna deenahu wa khuluqahu fazawjuhu fa in lam taf'al takun fitnatun fil ardi wa fasadun kabir this is a well known narration if you are planning to get your daughter married your son married the very first thing you need to look for is their religious commitment do you see this young man in the masjid that's a good sign when it comes to his outlook mashallah there are signs that this is a good young man ready to take the hand of my daughter and he will look after my daughter and the offspring that will come from this family will be a offspring that i will be in the grave but i will be benefiting from my very children that i have left behind rasul sallam says idha atakum man tardawna deenahu wa khuluqahu if someone comes with a proposal and you are happy why because two qualities that they have religious commitment their mannerism quality characteristic is of excellence this is the perfect person for your daughter or your son fa in lam taf'al if you don't follow this process rasul sallam says takun fitnatun fil ardi wa fasadun kabir you will see there is so much mischief and discord on earth so much fasad on earth i gave that example of that organization that i am connected with this is just one organization from many in the uk many of you may be dealing with your own personal issue, issues as a murabbi in the family you're dealing with all of those marital problems how many cases are there subhanallah there are days where we do nikah in the morning talaq in the evening by allah nikah in the morning talaq in the evening and when we are sitting perform the nikah i find it very difficult to smile it's a day of happiness and joy because i see the dark side I see the dark side. Young people not understanding their responsibility in a marriage. All of us well educated in terms of our rights. I know my right and I'm I'm very stagnant and confident about it. What about my responsibility? That's something we're going to speak about because that's an important component in a marital life, in establishing a prosperous life. When it comes to looking for the ideal candidate brothers and sisters, we've got to make the right choice. is this young man praying is this young woman praying do they abstain from that which is unlawful what is their religious commitment when it comes to their the 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 their commitment to allah jalla wa ala and following the way of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam if they have all of those things they have those characteristics then surely that is the perfect person for my daughter and all of the other things that i mentioned they're important don't get me wrong you might say well is it not important that i get my, my daughter married to a man who has a job absolutely but that shouldn't be your fundamental concern that shouldn't be your priority your priority is religious commitment then financial commitment i would want my daughter to get married in a household where the husband is not lazy the guy is not just sleeping and he's not just uh, uh, doing a 12 hour shift in his bed instead of his workplace i would want my daughter to be married to a young man who is active working i see future for my grandchildren there absolutely but if that's your priority then you're making the wrong decisions the priority should be religious commitment that is the most important thing and the rest are systematically important we need to think about those let us not make marriage difficult one of the prime reasons we see so much fasad so much problems is making the concept of marriage difficult fasar al halal as'ab manan al min al haram halal has become more difficult than haram today we step out of the masjid fornication all of the vices in society 
free mixing, all of those challenges that we face, is it not widespread? Very apparent in society. Yet we're making the one that is halal very difficult. The one that Allah made halal, we're making it very difficult for people. And yet we want to attain prosperity and happiness. Let us think about that point, brothers and sisters. May Allah Jalla wa'ala give all of us the tawfiq. What are the guidelines that we need to follow? What are the important guidelines that we need to follow when it comes to establishing a family, brothers and sisters, is making sure that we make that right choice. And I've spent a, quite a bit of time in that very point. Why? Because I see all of those challenges. We're making that mistake at that step, and then you come to the Imam Sahib, then you go to the Sharia Council, then you go to all of those organizations. And when we ask the question, well, what did you do when it comes to choosing the right person for your daughter or son? I made a mistake. Well, it's too late now. So you've got to make that decision right there and then when you're getting your daughter or your son married. Or even if it's a relative, you have the responsibility. You have the responsibility to tell them, I don't want my niece, I don't want my nephew to end up like this. And you, you have to intervene. This is Amr bil Ma'roof, Nahi anil Munkar, enjoining good and forbidding evil. So let us be conscious of that, brothers and sisters. When it comes to our role and responsibility at home, okay, that was that part we spoke about the initial stage of marriage. Once you've made that decision, now you are living under one roof, by four, surrounded by four walls. Compassion, kindness, love, mercy, forgiveness, in the midst of challenges, trial and tribulation. It's very important that we hold hands and we, we, we hold those hands strong and solid so that no matter what the situation is, we, 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 we are together and we don't become perturbed. You see, at home, when the husband understands his responsibility and the wife understands her responsibility, then you will see stability in that house. The problem occurs, and I'm saying this from the cases that we deal with, is when we are too busy looking for our rights. Did Allah give man rights? I'm asking you a question. Has Allah given the men rights? Allah says that he has given man certain degree over woman. He has given the rights of men. Open the two sacred sources, the Quran and the Sunnah. We find enough, enough evidence to say that Allah has given the rights of man. What about woman? Allah has given woman her rights as well. Both have been given in the two sacred sources, the Quran and the Sunnah. But what should we be focusing on? The rights or responsibility? Responsibility. Me as a man in my house, what is my responsibility and role at home? I shouldn't be thinking about what is my rights. Allah has given you your rights, my dear friend. Allah has given you your rights, my dear sister. Focus on your responsibility and then you will see, Alhamdulillah, now I'm actually getting on with my partner. And now I'm me as a father, I'm playing my role accordingly appropriately with my children. And if I have my mother and father living with me, I'm dutiful towards them as well. And I'm maintaining this beautiful balance between my wife, my own parents, my children, because all of those things, what do they cause? Sometimes they can be a problem, isn't it? Living with in-laws, one challenge. Wife doesn't want to leave. The husband doesn't want to stay in the house with his parents anymore. Children are troubles. So many issues. So many issues that we, each one of us are facing. So when it comes to understanding our responsibility, let us go back to an incident that took place in the life of the Messenger wasallam. When he got his daughter married, the apple of his eyes, Fatima radiallahu anha, he gave his daughter to a person that he thought was the best person who is worthy of taking the hand of his daughter. Anyone know who Fatima radiallahu anha got married to? Ali, his cousin brother, then son-in-law. This is a man of piety. This is a man who was God conscious. This is a man who was honest. This one is a man who was loving. Rasul saw all of those qualities in him and he said, well, my daughter is worthy of getting married to this man. Did he have wealth? He didn't have much wealth. Did he have all of the other things that the Quraysh had? He didn't have any of Could you compare him, this young man, to Musab ibn Umayr? You cannot. Musab ibn Umayr was wealthy. Ali radiallahu anhu didn't have much. He was rather in the custody of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he got Fatima radiallahu anha married to Ali ibn Abi Talib, brothers and sisters, focus on this very point. Because this is a 
game changer. This could change our uh, relationship in our houses, especially when we get our children married. He held the hand of Fatima and he said, my dear mother, and he used to refer to her as his mother out of love and ihtiram. He says, this is your responsibility and this is your responsibility. It doesn't end there. He gave nasiha to Ali ibn Abi Talib, his son-in-law. He held his hand and he said, my dear cousin, now you're going to be my son-in-law. This is your responsibility and this is your responsibility. Allahu Akbar. Not a moment did the Prophet Sallallahu say, this is your right and this is your right. Because the rights are found in the Quran. What we need to focus on is our responsibility. Mas'uliyyah. The responsibility that the man has given. The responsibility that the woman has been given. And if we can understand that at home, inshaAllah, Allah Jalla wa Ala will bring about prosperity, security, stability, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Our responsibility and role with our children. This is the final point that I'm going to quickly touch upon. I believe our respected Sheikh uh, Abdul Qayyum, hafizahullah ta'ala, will speak about this. But I just quickly wanted to mention the need for us to display role model behavior at home, especially with our children. When I say role model behavior, I'm speaking about speaking less, but exhibiting good qualities that your children can learn from. And this means that I have to be a role model father at home. I have to be a role model mother at home because my children learn from me. Children learn from who? Their parents. In sociology, they call this stage primary socialization. When the child is very much dependent on the mother and father for all of their information and their learning. And they're like a sponge. Every single information, they take that in. Uncultivated land ready to be cultivated at that age. Every single thing that they see from their parents, they learn, they take that on. You have to be very careful, my dear brothers and sisters, what you do at home. If you argue, that has an effect on them. If you are loving and caring towards one another, that has an effect on them. So you've got to be very mindful, very conscious, very aware and alert when it comes to your behavior, mannerism, code and conduct at home. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Best of example, afdalu man ala al-ard. The best of man, he was not just a prophet, he was not just an army general, he was not just a leader, he was a father to many. He was a brother, he was an uncle. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the qualities and characteristics he displayed when it comes to his family life, if only we adhered to that, we would have a prosperous and stable family. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he says, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا كَانَ أَرْحَمَ بِالْعِيَالِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ I've never seen anyone more compassionate than Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi to his family, to his wives. He had how many wives? One or more? How did he maintain that beautiful balance? Only Allah Jalla wa Ala knows. The four beautiful daughters that he had, the sons that he had, the children that he had, Zayd ibn Haditha, the, the young man that he had in his custody. Usama bin Zaid, Musab ibn Umay, oh, Anas ibn Malik, so many people around him, never ever did he shout, scream, swear at anybody. Can you do that for two hours? Can I do that for two hours? Wallahi, it's very difficult. But we have to train ourselves, especially with our children. Be kind to them, be loving towards them, speak nicely to them. This is the way of my Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And if we want to establish that prosperous family, that stable family. All of us want that. We want to hold hands towards Jannah bi ta'ala, not only in the life of this world. We want to be together in Jannah. We don't want to leave our children behind. We don't want to leave our partners behind. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Qū anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Save yourself. And here, when you look at the commentary of this verse, it is telling us, Save yourself from the severe torment by adhering and conforming to the law and the way of Allah Jalla wa Ala. And after that, the most important dawah is dawah at home. وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Be kind and compassionate to your children. The most important dawah is at home, with your children. لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكْ Allah Jalla wa'ala says, do not divert away from your purpose of existence. Don't let your wealth, your children, anything divert you from your very purpose of existence in the life of this world. Focus. Remain attentive, be mindful, show commitment, dedication. You only get one chance in the life of this world. The life of this world is coming to an end. And I'm going to finish with a very short poem. One of the poets, he says, 
Imam al-Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, يريد المرء أن يعطى مناه ويأبى الله إلا ما أراده يقول المرء فائدتي ومالي وتقوى الله أفضل ما استفاده Imam al-Shafi rahimahu Allah ta'ala he says يريد المرء أن يعطى مناه You see man wants what he desires Man wants materialism All those that things that are temporary In pursuit of things that are temporary he gives up his family Destroys his family Imam Shafi says, وَيَأْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا مَا أَرَادَ Allah only gives him what Allah wants, not what he wants. Because if Allah was to give you everything you desire, you would be in a state of distress. If Allah did not close doors on you sometimes from the knowledge that you do not have and Allah has because أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ Does he not know who he has created and he is the most subtle and most aware? Allahu Akbar. If Allah Jalla wa Ala gave all of us those things that we would desire, we would be in a state of distress, imbalance, insecure, problems, challenges. وَيَأْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا مَا أَرَادَ يَقُولُ الْمَرْءُ فَائِدَةِ وَمَالِ Man says, I only want what my desire, what my desire seeks, and that which is a benefit to me. وَتَقْوَى اللَّهِ أَفْضَلُ مَسْتَفَادَ Being mindful of Allah, the concept of taqwa, being fearful of Allah, thinking about Jannah and Jahannam, thinking about your role in the life of this world, why you are here, where you're heading, afdalu mustafada. This will bring about the best of you in the hereafter. May Allah Jalla wa'ala accept us. May Allah Jalla wa'ala give us the tawfiq to adhere to everything that we have heard. May Allah Jalla wa'ala make us amongst the people that when they hear, they put into play and into practice. May Allah Jalla wa'ala accept our efforts, accept our deeds, and may Allah Jalla wa'ala give us the tawfiq to utter la ilaha illallah during our last moments. May Allah return us from this temporary place to the hereafter, our everlasting abode, in such a fashion that our Lord is pleased with us. Hada ma'indi wal ilmu inda Allah. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabina Muhammad wa alihi wa sallam.